Munich in 1918 was the scene of enormous upheaval. Germany had emerged defeated from the First World War and was going through a social crisis. This upheaval led to a revolt against the government. Kurt Eisner, a journalist of Jewish origins, and his Social Democrat followers carried out a bloodless coup with the support of the Imperial Army. Ludwig III and his family were sent into exile. Eisner became Prime Minister of the new government. However, those who imagined that this revolution, achieved without bloodshed, would bring stability to Germany were sadly disappointed. A secret society called the Thule Society became the new government's first enemy. This was a deeply racist organization which took its name from Thule. In Nordic mythology, the legendary kingdom whence came the ancient Germanic peoples and was founded in 1918 by Rudolf von Sebettendorf. In setting up the Thule Society, Sebottendorf's racist ideas had been shaped by three ideologues who had devoted themselves to mysticism. Madame Blavatsky, Guido von Liszt, and Adolf Lanz. Madame Blavatsky developed a theory that the Aryan race, which she believed to be the ancestor of the German people, was an allegedly superior race. According to this theory, one civilization had ruled the world thousands of years before the civilizations of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Atlantis. Blavatsky thought that this people were members of a very noble and pure race, but that they had been wiped from the face of the earth by a volcanic disaster. In her view, those who survived the disaster were scattered all over the world, as a result of which the Aryans intermingled with other races. In order to find evidence for her mystical myths, Blavatsky traveled as far as Tibet and studied Buddhist priests. One symbol she used on the cover of her book, The Secret Doctrine, was particularly striking, the swastika. Guido von Liszt thought along the same lines as Blavatsky. In his view, the German race were actually the representatives of the so-called Aryan race suggested by Blavatsky. Liszt also came up with another claim. Throughout the course of history, there had been secret societies which sought to continue and protect the culture of the Aryan race. The Freemasons, the Knights Templars, and the Rosicrucians. In 1912, he founded a secret society, similar to Freemasonry, called the German Order. Liszt died in 1919, but he left behind an admirer who would continue his ideas with the greatest zeal, master of the German order, Adolf Lanz. In 1899, Lanz had founded a cult known as the New Templars and declared himself to be the Grand Master. Thus it was that he combined the characteristics of the Knights Templars with zealous racism. In 
In 1905, he began publishing the anti-Semitic magazine Ostara to spread his racist ideas. In one article, Lantz claimed that members of the master race sat differently from other people and even had a different foot structure. According to Lanz's superstitious belief, there was a so-called fight for survival between yellow and black, a struggle which yellow had to win at all costs. Right from the first edition of the magazine, Sebattendorf, the future founder of the Thule Society, was there among his followers and the proponents of the ideology he had infected them with. Sebattendorf, a member of the German order, was a Freemason. Thus it was that mysticism, racism, admiration for old pagan cultures, and a hierarchical organization similar to that of Freemasonry all came together. In effect, this was the birth of Nazism. The ideology of the Thule Society was built on resurrecting pre-Christian pagan German culture. Within that ideology, the elimination of non-Aryan races assumed a similar importance. Heading the list, were the blacks, gypsies, and Jews. These words from one of the Thule Society's publications are an indication of this. Arrest the Jews. That will bring peace to our country. That is why the Thule leader, Sebattendorf, refused to accept the chancellorship of Kurt Eisner, one of the Jews he regarded as the eternal foe. He stated this quite openly. Yesterday we witnessed the destruction of all that we believe in and attach importance to. Instead of princes with whom we share a blood bond, our deadly enemies rule, the Jews. We cannot know what will be born out of such chaos. So long as I hold the iron hammer, I shall lead Thule to war. Our discipline is Germanic discipline, and Germanic means nobility. Our god is Wallvather. Our emblem is Aryan, the first flame, the sun, the eagle. From today our symbol shall be the eagle. It will remind us that we may have to die if we are to live. The Thule militia thus armed themselves and rose up against the government. Yet their attempts to remove Eisner from power ended in failure. The streets turned into a battlefield of minor skirmishes. For the Thule leadership, this was actually a dress rehearsal of what would happen in the future.